Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. Without any further ado, let's get started. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a movement that I just recently learned about. Now, the name of this movement, and I guess I should tell you the background first. So the background behind this movement is that I had someone in a workshop who told me that uh, they felt like they were having way too many. So, so time from home was great. Working from home was excellent and they had good experiences with it. They were able to get a lot more done. But then when I said they were able to get a lot more done, I said, what, what do you spend your time doing? And this person was quick to point out that they would spend five to six hours in meetings uh, on many days. And I was like, whoa, right? So then came this huge movement, or at least something that I read about. And it was a movement to cancel your meetings. It talked about, hey, let's get rid of your meetings. Let's cancel all your meetings. And it gave this rundown. If the meeting doesn't have this, you should cancel it. If it doesn't have this, you should cancel it. And while I get what they were trying to do, and I understand the impact of having too many meetings, I don't know that canceling every meeting is going to be the predominant way to solve the problem. So the question is, how can we manage our workloads better? And how can we get to the point where we have enough time to do the things we need to do for ourselves personally, as well as professionally? Good questions. So for me, one book that helped me get there was a book by David Allen called Getting Things Done. Inside the book, he lays out some key things about managing your inbox to get it down to zero, or how do you decide whether a meeting's important or not? And these sound like such simple things, but I remember one lesson in the book very implicitly, and this might help with, with meetings, believe it or not. Here we go. In the book, he says, if you are out and about to go pick up your dry cleaning, now this is in the days when people were going to the office, he says, and you're less than a block away from your wife's favorite Greek restaurant. I said, okay. He says, the number one thing you should not do is call home and ask if your wife wants a euro. The thing you should do is go to the Greek restaurant and buy her a euro dinner. He says, buy the euro platter, go home with it. He says, either A, she'll put away what she had for dinner for herself and eat the euro platter with joy. B, she'll thank you graciously for getting a euro platter and uh, put it in the fridge for lunch the next day. He says, or C, either way, don't worry about it. You've come out a winner because you went out of your way to do something kind for someone that wasn't necessarily part of your original schedule. I thought about this and I said, you know, <laughs> when you're doing something that's gonna make somebody happy, right? There's a difference between doing something exceptional that's gonna make someone happy because you feel like you should and doing something out of obligation uh, because you're trying to make a certain impression. Now, many times with teams, they, they want to make a good impression on a product owner. They want to overbuild or over-architect or over-steamroll everything that they're doing. You know, we're asking them for a Fiat and they're building a Ferrari. That's not where I'm going with this. If you knew the price of oil change on a Ferrari, you wouldn't want a Ferrari. We'll leave it at that, right? People don't consider the maintenance and upkeep for those kinds of things. I think here what I'm focused on, though, is when it comes to meetings, you have to ask yourself what value is being provided in a meeting. Is the meeting adding value to what we're trying to do? And I love one concept that uh, someone brought up to me. As part of this cancel your meetings movement, if you will, uh, the, the, one, the one concept that I read over and over again is in order for me to decide which meetings I need to cancel, I require pre-reading. If there is ever a meeting on a calendar scheduled for an hour or more, they, there must needs be some type of pre-read. Uh, it has to have a clear agenda. It has to have the right attendees. All the rats need to be there, right? We talked about that earlier. But you need to make sure that you have some type of pre-reading material that's going to guide you, that's going to help you understand. And then once somebody provides that, here comes the key part, you need to actually read it. You shouldn't just skim it over and try to squeak your hands in the mirror and say, oh yeah, I had a chance to read the material. No. You need to read the material thoroughly so that when you go in, you can get to the point, do what you need to do, and reach a conclusion by the end of the meeting. The worst feeling in the world is getting into a meeting without you know, going all the way through the pre-reading material and then looking at each other and going, I, I think we have some time next week. Maybe we should get together and have a discussion about that so we can make a decision about this. Oh my goodness, you just created a second meeting and a third meeting, right? So the habit should be 
Number one, clear agenda. Number two, write attendees. Number three, ask for pre-reading if it's going to be anything long-winded. Ask for something that's going to show you what you can expect and level set expectations so that your meetings don't wind up just becoming a pile of uselessness, right? So while I'm not necessarily a fan of the cancel your meetings movement, because I think meetings add great value, I think that you need to make certain that you understand all the key principles to make your meeting effective and read that book, Getting Things Done, because I think it's got a lot of key tips and tricks in there that are going to help you along the way. That's going to do it for today. As always, we encourage you, if you have something you want to hear on a daily stand-up episode, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Learn more at AgileDad.com. As always, we encourage you, stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.